importance of behavior. Let's not forget that we, we, we as behavior managers, our job is to not be there anymore. <laughs> if we have to come back, if we have to continue to teach people what to do, we haven't done our job correctly. Right? So use natural contingencies whenever possible. In other words, we want to try and trap the behavior. You're going to train a particular behavior and you're going to use contrived reinforcers for that. But ultimately, you want that behavior to come into contact with the natural reinforcers. right? So you want to take your little training that you're doing and make that behavior that you're trying to get the person to do to be something that would be reinforced automatically in the real world. Right? So natural reinforcers are going to then maintain that programmed response. Uh, so again, if you're trying to teach somebody how to use money, um, you could use my example earlier of you know speaking Dari uh, with the shopkeepers. Uh, my friend that was teaching me how to use my numbers uh, was actually a student of mine, and he's like, well, you need to learn this in order to function here. So he, we were in my, he'd come over to my hotel room and he'd do training sessions with me. And then we would immediately take a cab and go down and have me buy something, right? So, and he would be with me in case I got stuck, but I would have to ask the price. I would have to negotiate the dollar, the, the monetary amount. And that just made it natural, right? I was able to successfully buy something without someone's help. And I didn't have to have a translator or anything like that. So that's an example of trapping. That's, and he was, he, he'd never heard of that before. And he did a great job of trapping my response and causing me to be very functional with regard to buying stuff. So much so that I spent a lot of money while I was there buying things like carpets and food. <laughs> Of course. So, um, change the people in that natural environment. You, you, you need the people in that environment to actually be the reinforcers, right? Uh, you need it not just to be you know, the behavioral modifier, right? Um, ultimately, you want the uh, the teacher to <coughs> excuse me. Ultimately, you want the teacher to reinforce the student. Ultimately, you want other students to reinforce the student. You don't want the behavior manager to have to be there the whole time. I'm going to get rid of this, right? The idea is, is that then, for whatever behavior that they're doing, they will be reinforced by the person that's in their natural environment. Right? That's called the natural trap. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay? Um, we can also use intermittent schedules for reinforcement. So for example, we, we start out with constant reinforcement, right? the continuous reinforcement, then we start to thin it out. So we start with, the you're going to get reinforcers for the behavior you did today, and then you're going to do it, uh, you have to wait another day, and then eventually you have to wait five days, and then, and then a month, and three months, and a year, and so on and so forth. Right? You may not ever get to the year thing, but that's just an example of showing you what, what I mean by using the intermittent schedules in this case. Okay. And sometimes you do have to pop back in and uh, continue to you know, kind of redo the scenario a little bit to put them back in touch with maybe some contrived reinforcers if, if the natural ones aren't taken over.